Hey everybody, it's Glenn. Back in this video with both the Disney Store exclusive Marvel Select, Avenging Captain America and Winter Soldier. It's a two birds with one stone action figure review because I have Marvel Legends Movie Giant Man Bath series incoming and I didn't want either of these getting lost in the shuffle of those. On the packaging sides we get some nice artwork which feature Cap posing patriotically in front of the red, white and blue of the American flag and then the Winter Soldier fleeing an explosion which I don't want to fly fast and loose with the accusations, but he may just be responsible for what with missing a hand grenade from that harness. Then the packaging backs feature each of the action figures, which we won't linger on as we're about to tuck into the action figures themselves, but I will point out that in the UK these set me back 19.95 each, and then 29.90 euros if you're on the continent. So here they are both out of packaging and this two-in-one review not only seems natural as the two characters share a synergy from the comic books but also because they're both sculpted by Jean St. Jean and as such they're both very complementary to each other. And although each of these selects is representing the comic incarnations of the characters, the level of detail in the sculpt is such that it lends each of them an almost movie level realism. So all the creases and various other detailing in the costume is so well observed and realized to a level that it's a lot for the eye to take in and frankly I find it really quite awe-inspiring. Further still, the sculpts of each of them are met by an equally high level of paint deco. In fact, when I opened both of these I got hit by the that smell that I usually only get when I open NECA's figures, NECA also using a high level of paint deco. If you've collected enough figures I'm sure you'll be familiar with that smell, it's like you could almost get high from inhaling the paint vapour. So what we get is a lot of dry brushing where lighter shades of paint are brushed over darker colours and what that does it heightens the sense of light and shade, really emphasising the dimensionality of the sculpt. And it's likely the steady diet of underpainted Marvel Legends that make a deco of this level really quite revelational. And here the select compared to the Legends cap that came out in the Mandroid Bathwave a couple of years back and you can see the difference a deco can make. The Legends cap does actually have a good sculpt but with the most part not being complemented by a deco you see less of the sculpt and more just the garishness of its flat plastic. The only niggle I will mention with the deco is the Winter Soldier's metal arm which I wish was a bit more silver to make it a lot more distinct from the grey of his tunic. Now taking a closer look at their head sculpts and they're pretty solid. A little gripe I do have is about Captain America's helmet and the way the lip at the back flares out. But that's likely more a criticism for the character design and not the execution of that design. With the Winter Soldier I'd say I'd like to see his mask a bit wider across his face. As not being so does to my eye make the lower half of his face seem much broader and more square jawed than I imagine the character to be. But really that's a small criticism as both these head sculpts have a great air of realism about them. In fact the Marvel Select cap has a more realistic face sculpt than Hasbro's Marvel Legends movie cap. Now taking a look at Cap Shield and you can see there the star and its circles are in fact sculpted in relief and then on the reverse we get these straps which are made of like a softer vinyl material which you can then wrestle Steve's hand into. There Shield on Arm, Cap looks pretty darn stoic and I feel like some Cap figures suffer from having a shield that's a bit too small but here I think it's a decent enough size relative to his body. Now his right hand comes with a trigger finger poised to hold a gun yet he doesn't come with one which brings me to a question I was asked. Well let me bring on my Marvel Select Deadpool which thinking of it looks way out of scale with this new Cap one. Let's take his handgun and place it in Cap's hand. Nice that's a pretty much perfect fit, a match made in heaven so to speak unless you're the target in Cap's sights in which case it's a match made in hell. And now with Deadpool being so big in comparison I'm going to break out the measuring tape so you get an accurate idea of these guys scale and they stand a shade over seven inches. And a further illustration of scale is if I bring in the Marvel Legends movie cap there you can see they stand well clear head over him. And Matt here's that side by side comparison that you asked for. Now my knowledge or lack thereof of guns has come under criticism by one of you of late. What can I say I live in a country where guns are a Legal. All I need to know is if you shoot somebody with one you'll really hurt or potentially kill them. What can I say? I'm a lover not a fighter. 
But by all means, feel free to help me out in the comments below, because Winter Soldier here comes with guns aplenty. The first is attached to the strap of his harness, a bit like how my mum stitched my mittens to my jacket sleeves when I was five. Well, not really like that at all, in fact. Looks cool in his hand, and I'm gonna call it an Uzi, just because that's the name of a gun I know. Then he comes with a gun which can be secured in his hip holster, which actually has a part that fastens over it. And to fasten that, I've wedged it in pretty tight, but there we go. So there you see both his hands are sculpted to hold weapons, and actually instead of depriving Deadpool of his gun, we could have Cap and Winter Soldier do a gun share. When it comes to posing with the gun, I do wish his arm at the elbow was able to straighten out a bit more though. Then if not saving the best till last, then certainly saving the biggest till last. It's this whopping, what I'm gonna call sniper rifle. It's got some nice military green deco and then some gray dry brushing over the black parts. And their pose like that is just about his articulation stretched to the limit. So what better time than now to look at that? So both have head rotation and then they're able to look down very slightly and then Cap looks up slightly whereas Winter Soldier more just returns to looking facing forward. Both have upper arm rotation, then the arms hinge up this much, there's rotation at the top of the arm and then they both have single jointed elbows bringing the lower arm into just about less than a right angle to the upper arm, both have rotation at the wrist. Then additionally Cap has a wrist hinge moving his hand up and down whereas the Winter Winter Soldier doesn't. Both have waist rotation, the Winter Soldiers is pretty stiff, and then they have rotating diaphragm joints, yet these don't really seem to move backwards and forwards and seem to be more about pivoting side to side. At the hips, the legs move out to the side this much, Winter Soldier slightly more than Cap, they move this far forward and then this far back. Then both have rotation just above the knee on Winter Soldier on his left leg, that rotation cuts hidden a bit more subtly underneath the strap of his gun holster. Both have double jointed knees, then they both have rotation at the top of their respective boots, and then their feet are hinged moving backwards and forwards, plus they both have that ankle rocker pivot that I love! And taking advantage of that ankle pivot, this is each of them cutting their widest stance possible, still with both feet flat on the floor, and Winter Soldier's wider stance has nothing to do with a better ankle pivot, it's more his superior hip articulation. Both come with display bases, caps features the Hydra symbol carved into stone in the remnants of what I assume was a former Hydra base, which is now in ruins, no doubt thanks to Cap and allies. And the base has a single peg to plug Cap into. As for the Winter Soldier's base, I'm gonna need some explaining in the comments below, as like many, I'm more familiar with the Winter Soldier through the movie than I am the comics. As I imagine the details of this display base, that big broken circular window, are specific to a scene in the comics. As perhaps is this pink liquid, which in the glass there reminds me of the mouthwash my dentist has me rinse my mouth out with when I visit him. Yeah, it likely serves a greater purpose than keeping your breath fresh. But my favourite part is this crate accessory. It's got really nice kind of aged deco for the wood, the hammer and sickle of the Soviet Union on the top. This side up, whoops! Oh goodness, I hope I didn't damage the fragile electronic equipment inside. Seriously though, I think this prop will come in really handy for many a action figure display artist. But for now, away with it, and let's plug the Winter Soldier into his display base. While I think the action figures are more than worth the money in themselves, these display bases really are the cherry on the cake. However, as Jamie pointed out with his cap display base, mine is really wobbly too. It's like the plastic of the base part is warped. Yep, there you go, Swaggy, all four of them displayed alongside each other, Cap and Winter Soldier next to the Black Panther and Spectacular Spider-Man that I've also recently reviewed. So yeah, I'd give Cap and Winter Soldier a both a big recommend, which is quite big for me, as usually these more militaristic action figures don't really float my boat, yet here the sculpt and deco is such that it turns my head. In fact, I'm pretty sure this Winter Soldier was released a couple of years back, so this re-release gives you a second chance to grab him. Yet my favourite of those four has to be Spectacular Spider-Man, so if you missed my review of him, click this video to catch up on that, and I am but an action figure reviewing machine fueled by your support, so you know what to do. Yeah, do it like Deadpool and give my video a big thumbs up, and I hope to see you all next time.
Mm, bye.